just gonna catch up on some of the stuff that's been going on around the property here. Uh, we've all been sick with COVID and uh, just catch up on a few projects. And our buddy David stopped by, we found a major issue around with his bus and uh, just some other stuff. So our buddy Leroy went to the vet. He's gonna be 10 years old and he got a clean bill of health. He's doing real good. He got all his blood work and everything. And we haven't showed him for a while. So he's getting to be an old man, but he still thinks he's a puppy sometimes. Good boy. That's a good boy, Leroy. So Tyler came down uh, from Indiana where he's been living and working there. He brought us this uh, Allison 740 transmission. Uh, Tyler's on the left there in his truck. Um, he's super happy. He's been living up there since uh, this past summer. He works in the agricultural industry now for heavy equipment and he doesn't work on actual vehicles anymore. So he's got an office job um, and he's loving it. He said he hadn't hurt his back at all until he had to go move this transmission for us. But it's good to see him and catch up with him. And uh, that's where he's been. If people have been asking, we've had lots of comments about it that we've responded to in the comments section. But uh, he did bring this down here for us this weekend. So there's the Allison 740. That's going to go in the Cena Cruiser. So that'll be a nice, nice addition to get rid of that manual transmission that's in there. So we'll have an automatic. We'll put an air shifter on it so we don't have to run any linkages or anything back to it. But uh, our buddy Steven gave us that transmission. And that'll go on the 8V71 in the Cena Cruiser. All right, so that's the Cena Cruiser that the automatic transmission is going to go in. The, the manual in here is so crazy. It's reverse shift pattern because it's, it's a truck transmission that's flipped around backwards. It doesn't shift very well. The linkages are really bad. Very poor installation on it. But we didn't put all the work into this bus and all the effort to get it roadworthy again. We drove it 400 miles home this past summer. We didn't do all that work just for it to sit here and rot in the woods. So it, it is on the agenda to get going and, and get her all fixed back. Back, fix back up nice but let me go inside and i'll show you that linkage and, and why that needs to get changed yeah so the shifter sits up really high on the left there um it has a splitter on it but it, it doesn't work very well but the big issue is, is that rod right there that runs through the middle of the bus there that's the shift linkage for it that's the shifter and it just takes up space and there's no way to really get around it and it's totally in the way like i said it's a very bad design and this whole thing, it's not really mounted to anything. It's sort of half-ass bolted. You can see how much it moves there. That's stopping it from shifting into gear all the time. So you really got to struggle with it. Um, it's just, it's mounted to this really thin piece of aluminum. It's an electrical access panel cover. There's no real mount to it. And yeah, you, by, by losing that much throw on that unit moving, nine chances out of 10, it does not go into gear. So you really fight with it. I pretty much so drove it in three gears on the way home because I couldn't get it to go into all the gears very well. So that, that's like, so that's going to come out of here. Go just put a little air shifter in there, have to get rid of this whole linkage that runs all crazy through here. And then we'll have it uh, 
back to normal and then we can start with the interior rebuild on this thing. A lot of, a lot of work to be done, but it'll be, it'll be a very fun project to get into. This is the air intake on David's bus. I noticed that it was split and you can reach your whole arm inside of there. So it's been sucking dirty air through there. This was on the bottom, but if you would have looked closer from the inside, you might have noticed earlier, there's another big split under here too. So this thing is really coming apart. So we've come up with a concoction. This it is no longer available in LA on the parts, um, but we found another kind of a corrugated pipe that we're gonna put here with some sewer connections on the ends, uh, rubber rubber connectors to different places. There's two of these and they're both in bad shape, but this, this one's really bad and just completely just ripped open. That's, that could have cost them an engine. Pull that off there. Sure. And it, yeah, it, it fits like it was made for it. That's a nice tight fit. It's a good tight fit. Those clamp on it, be good to go. Yep, and it even comes with its own hose clamps. You can't beat it. <laughs> Gonna spray a little starting fluid on there around the air intake where he's replaced all that. Once it's running and we'll check for leaks. If there's any kind of leak while it's running, the idle RPM will increase. Also noticed this uh, fuel leak here on David's bus when it came in the little sending unit there on that fuel pressure gauge you can see it dripping um, there's actually quite a bit of fuel coming out of it so we're gonna get that taken care of for him too fuels expensive nowadays so we're installing these LED high bay lights today um, we're just using this type of a hook system on them right right in It's got a jam nut there. Um, lots of LEDs, very bright. We've got one up there already. And we're just installing them on some poles because our ceiling doesn't allow us to hook to it very easily. That's directly in the middle of the shop, which has given us great lighting between the buses back here. We're gonna install another one uh, up here on the side to take care of this corner around the back side of a bus as well. So it's gonna go up there. We'll have uh, Six of them total, three at the back of the shop, and then three at the front of the shop as well. So that's like a pipe flange mount for a black pipe. The further out you slide it to the end, I think the better too. That's good. It's got a nice color temperature of 5,000 degrees Kelvin, and it's 250 watts of power that it uses, which is very energy efficient for how bright it is. So that one we installed with a little hook eye that we put into one of the bolts that was on the ceiling. So it hangs down there, that's in the middle there. All the corners are lit up nicely. All right, so this is the shop here with just those couple little side lights are on, those tiny little ones. And we'll turn on the big lights here so you can see how much brighter it is in here. You can really see everything very, very well now. So that's what six of these lights strategically placed around the shop. You might see a little bit of flicker in the camera here. That is these little side lights. That's not the big ones. You don't see that in real life. That's just the cameras picking it up. The I guess the frame rate is equaling the LEDs on there. But uh, yeah, the, the shop is nice and bright and very happy with it. They sent us these lights. I'm gonna put a link uh, in the description to them if it's something you're interested in. But uh, this was something they sent us as a promotion for us to try out for them. But uh, so far we're very happy with them. We recently had one of these here that we, it was our, our client had purchased it from Harbor Freight. That's, that's who has this brand. It's a 12 volt and 24 volt charger. 
Um, but as soon as we used it, I loved it. And I wanted to put on our wish list here. Uh, and now we got one. So one thing that's very important on it is it states in the instructions to charge it fully before use, to charge the batteries every time after you use it for a jump start, and to charge it once a month. So it seems like it's very critical uh, to make sure that you maintain the batteries property in it, properly in it. So uh, if you're something you're interested in looking at, having a 24 volt jump starter, that's gonna be awesome for us. Uh, we have a lot of 24 volt buses here that need jump starts from time to time.